Hello, Fernis Boros here, and today it's time for my best the controller and camera settings for FIFA 22. And this goes for both for new gen, old gen, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. It's gonna be pretty much the same. And this is for optimized experience online to get the best possible results, hopefully, in online competitive gameplay. And this year we have a big change, and that is the competitive master switch. And this one, if you play competitive modes like Rivals, Online Seasons, so for Champions, it must be turned on. But if you just want to chill and play, I don't know what, maybe draw the friendlies career mode, you can have this off and enjoy all this assistance from AI. But if you want to compete and play in the difficult modes, you could say it must be turned on, which means uh, no contextual agile dribbling, no auto clearances, etc. And mainly as well, no assisted jockey. Then we have FIFA Trainer, which I think should be hide unless you're new to the game and need some help, of course, with the uh, buttons. But this one should be hide. And then time finishing this year is a big feature. This one, I think, should be on. And you should practice and learn how to time shots because it will really help you here to score more chances and be more effective in your finishing. Time finishing should be turned on. And then we have next player switch indicator and this one is per default on and this will give you one extra marker in the defense which is going to be the closest player next to your manually controlled defender. And this one if you press R1 it will be the one that you switch to and you will always know which one you will switch to with this extra marker which is kind of hollow but the R1 switch will always be to the closest player that's why I think uh, this uh, feature is a bit uh, superfluous perhaps and you can do perfectly fine without having this one on and sometimes as well it could be confusing seeing two markers in the defense that is why I personally think this one is better off it all depends of course what you're used to you can use both with success but I prefer to have this one off as it won't be any risk to get confused in the defense of which player you actually control manually. And then we have pass block assistance, which I think should have been under this master competitive switch. But since it is not, you can just have this one on and give you some extra assistance and help to block passes from the AI. And then we have this one auto switching with some new options this year. But this is the classic option and I think this one is the best one. And this determines when the AI will switch player for you. And this one will switch on lob, crosses and loose balls. Now I think that is a perfect mixture and then manual is just uh, too difficult because if there's a hard cross against you you very often don't have time to make this a quick switch and if you have automatic there is no chance to defend manually because AI will switch for you after each and every ground pass and that is just gonna be pointless and then you can also try out these ones they are new only on air balls and only on loose balls so they are kind of separated and you can experiment and see what works out the best for you but I think this one the classic one is a perfect mixture. Over to auto switching move assistance and this one is the hardest one to understand and this one for some reason as well is per default here on high for me which is definitely not the best option and this is complicated but this one determines how much the player will move in the direction he was running after you make a manual player switch. Yes this one is really <laughs> complicated but the best one I think is none and this one is also used by most pro players give you the best possible structure in defense but sometimes if you have issues defending through balls it could be a bit easier having this one on low which gives you some help here simply since the defender will fall back a little bit after you made this switch while if you have here high i think it will create here a too unorganized defense that will just lack structure and then this one as well for this year is new clearance assistance and this one can just be kept on directional which gives you the option to actually direct the, the clearance a little bit instead of classic, which is just a random clearance. Just make sure to don't uh, point towards your own net. You don't want to score these own goals. Clear the ball with circle and point where there are no opponents, simply. Over to player lock in this one is a great feature this year and this one gives you the option to manually move players. If you press L1 or 3 at the same time, you can control players manually and this one is called play lock you can determine their runs and this one should definitely be on it is an amazing feature it was introduced the last year and i'll also talk more about this in a future video amazing feature definitely should be on then icon switching new for this year i think is kind of um, confusing and pointless if you press R3 while defending, you're gonna get these markers above the defender's heads and you can simply pick a direction and which player you want to switch to, up, left, right or down. But in a very tense game, it is hard to have time to read these icons and have time as well to determine 
which is the right player to switch to. I think this one is a bit confusing. It is a nice um, idea, but to implement this in a very tense game, it is difficult. I think it is better to just use manual switching and have this one on off like this because it could cause simply confusion. Over to right stick switching and this one uh, determines what is the center point of reference when you right stick switch either the ball or the player and the classic one is player which also makes more sense. It is more logical simply to have the player as a center point of reference. It makes it easier I think to switch to the right player. And then we have these ones and unfortunately they should all be assisted. Uh, I know it is how it is, uh, but this is for the best uh, experience online to not give you any disadvantage in tough games. Um, that is how it is. Only one that you could try out on semi is uh, cross assistance. If you find this one assisted uh, too random, but I think this one is quite good. And also as well for this one, this is for L1 through balls. I would usually use a manual, but uh, this year since we have this L1 triangle ball, which I spoke about last video, assisted is gonna be perfect. So, assisted, but if you want to have most the chest hair on the party, you can try out manual on everything, but it won't give you too much success, unfortunately. But you will have most chest hair. And then we have your analog sprint, which is per default turned on, and with this one you can kind of have sprint if you don't press down the R2 button fully, but I think there is no need to have sprint, so I think off is better. And with this one you can just press down the sprint button slightly and you will still get the full sprint. And then this one, pass receiver lock, I think is best on late if you play on let's say under 50 ping. But if you are on very high ping, early is better, which will make the pass receiver locked on early, which will reduce misplaced passes in high ping. But if you play in a bit lower ping, then late is better, which will give you the option to divert to this pass in the last moment, which could be good if you see that maybe the defender is about to cut off that exact passing lane. And last out, we have vibration feedback, and this is per default on enhance, which is definitely not the best option. You want the controller steady, you want to be steady on the sticks, so I think the best one is definitely to have it just off to give you most stability. Over to camera settings and this one here, the first option is really not the best for optimized experience online. This new game cam, I think this one should be, well, you have two options mainly, either telebroadcast, the classic option used by most pro players, or co-op for a bit better overview. If you prefer, let's say, passing um, orientated gameplay, this one gives you the perfect overview. But I think the right mixture between um, overview and intimacy with the pitch is the broadcast gives you the best uh, mixture of this. But you can also here change the camera settings to the zoom and height. And I prefer personally here to have this height on 10 and zoom on zero. So you can see most of the pitch. But why not then as well put the height on 20? Well, you can definitely do that. Uh, but it gives you this kind of uh, helicopter perspective which don't really show the flanks as uh, good. If you have this on 10, you can easier spot the runs from fullbacks and wingers as you see more simply of uh, the sides of the pitch, the flanks. That's why I think this is a perfect mix with 10 and 0. Then we have this one last out, the visuals, and this one I think it should always be turned on player name and indicator and player name. So you can see who you're controlling in the game or who the opponent has on the ball and you can get some important uh, information if he's let's say left footed, right footed or something you can see exactly who has the ball instead of just seeing uh, the online user ID which is uh, kind of pointless. So I think you should definitely get uh, this setting and then one last thing as well, the rest here is I think fine on default. You can always uh, twist and tweak uh, as you wish but this one I think should be turned off as well. Scrolling lineup sometimes can be annoying and disturbing. So I think this one should be turned off. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, make sure to drop a like. We have more tutorials coming, of course, to the channel. So make sure to stay tuned. And also as well tonight, the new episode of the RTG. Don't miss that one either. Thanks so much for watching. As always, you know, until next time, take care.